Glad I'm wearing back to normal next year. Got all signed up for your classes next year. Yeah. Looking forward to having something different. <laughs> I guess look what we want. All right. None of this made me wrong. Oh, How are you, Hunter? Good. Good. Working on getting it all plugged in. So hang on just a minute. Let turn on. So it looks like, okay, here comes Alexis.
Alrighty. <clears throat> All right, we're going to do a quick review as we go through everything, kind of look at where we've been so far with polynomials. We have talked about um, <coughs> that polynomials are going to be um, in algebra. We know that when we have a polynomial, it's going to be an algebraic expression that may involve just numbers. It may involve numbers and variables or just variables. But we said that we know that it's going to be more than one term when it's separated by pluses and minuses. And that's when we said that we know that um, we have multiple terms <clears throat> separated by a plus and a minus. And so we have looked at multiplying monomials when I had a single term times a single term. Um, we have worked on dividing monomials. And we've also talked about when um, I multiply variables that have exponents, I add my exponents. When I divide variables with exponents, I subtract the exponents. And then, um, so now what we're gonna be looking at today is multiplying polynomials. When I have more than one term times more than one term. We previously looked at in our last section, <clears throat> I guess it was less than 135, I think it was, at six. 135, we multiplied a monomial times a binomial or a trinomial, and we said we thought about that as the distributive property, where I have something outside of parentheses and I have to multiply it by each term inside parentheses. And then our division was kind of similar to where we had a polynomial divided by a monomial, so we had to divide everything in parentheses by the number that was outside parentheses. And so today it looks a little different because I have two sets of parentheses and I have two terms inside parentheses. So when we think about like if, um, one of the things it says is when, when to multiply two polynomials, multiply each term in the first polynomial by each term in the second polynomial and then add the resulting products. So the first thing is to multiply each term in the first polynomial by each term in the second polynomial, and then add the resulting products. So that's where we combine our like terms. So if we looked at our first example, I'm gonna multiply x times 2x, and then I'm gonna multiply x times three. Okay, so I'm multiplying x by 2x, and then x by three. And then everything is separated by our plus sign. And so now I'm gonna multiply two times two X and then two times three. Okay. <clears throat> so I can see that now I have X times two X plus X times three plus two times two X plus two times three. So I go ahead and simplify that. X times two X will be two X squared x times 3 is 3x, three 2 times 2 is 4x, and 2 times 3 is 6. But notice at this point, I've got 3x and 4x. So those are like terms. So the next step says we are going to combine like terms. So it says remember to arrange the terms in order from highest degree to the lowest degree, placing variables of equal, equal degree in alphabetical order. <clears throat> So in this example, um, we're dealing with all variable x. We have 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 because we looked in 3x plus 4x is going to be 7x. So that term in the middle was added together. Okay, and then it talks about how to use algebra tiles, but realistically, if you don't have algebra tiles that you can really move around, it doesn't help you too much. <clears throat> all right, so in this example, Notice I have x plus one times x plus two. So that means I'm gonna multiply x times x and x times two. So I'm gonna have x times x is x squared plus x times two. And actually, let me go ahead and write this out separately for just a minute. 
So I know I have x times x plus x times two. Okay, that was our first step. Now I'm gonna multiply the one by x. So that will be plus x and one times two plus one times two. So now that I've multiplied everything together, I'm gonna simplify and x times x is x squared plus x times two is two x plus x plus two. These are my like terms, two x and x. So x squared plus three x plus two is gonna be my final answer. Okay, so I combine my like terms. I have x squared plus two x plus x, two x plus x is three x plus two. Okay, so I multiply, I take the first term, multiply by the two terms in parentheses, take the second term, multiply by the two terms in parentheses. Okay, so you should be working this with me. You should have all of this written down. For example, one. <coughs> okay. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. I'm going to start by multiplying x times x. So x times x. Now I'm doing x times negative two. So plus x times negative whoop, two. <clears throat> All right, for some reason, there we go. Okay, so that's our first thing. We multiplied x times x, and then we multiplied a positive x times a negative two. So that's why I have plus x times negative two. Now I'm gonna multiply my next term, which is a positive one. And I have one times x is gonna be a positive x. And one times negative two, <clears throat> one times negative two is going to be minus, well, let me write it, let me write each of these, I'm sorry. So plus one times x and then plus one times negative two. So these were each of the things we multiplied, x times x, x times negative two, one times x, and one times negative two. Okay, so we're gonna combine each of these. So x times x is gonna give me x squared. Now I have a positive x times a negative two. Positive x times negative two is gonna be what kind of x? When I multiply positive times a negative, what am I gonna have? Opposite signs multiplied together, I'm gonna have a negative. So positive x times negative two will be negative two x. Next, I have a positive one times x will be a positive x. Then a positive one times a negative two is gonna be minus two. <clears throat> These terms in the middle can be combined. So negative two x plus x, I take the sign of the larger and find the difference. So x squared minus x minus two is my final answer. <clears throat> x squared minus x minus two. Okay, you should be writing this down. You should have worked through this with me. Now let's look at the last problem. I'm gonna start with two x. I'm gonna multiply it by x and by negative three. So two x, x plus two x times negative three. Now I've got positive one times x and positive one times negative three. So plus one times x plus one times negative three. I'm gonna combine <clears throat> what I've multiplied. Two x times x is gonna be two x squared. Positive two x times negative three. Positive two times negative three is gonna be a negative six. And so since it was a positive two X times negative three, it's gonna be negative six X. Now I have a positive one times a positive X. So it will be positive X. Then I have positive one times negative three. So that will be minus three. My middle two terms are the ones that can be combined. So I have two X squared, negative six X plus X. 
That's the same as saying negative six plus one. So that would be negative five X minus three. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Now, what I want to do real quick before we do the practice over here in activities two, is I want to go ahead and show you what we've just been doing. For some reason, this book always breaks it up into two separate things, and they always tell you the easy part after you've learned the hard part. So what they've done is they've said, I've got something called the FOIL method, which is a mnemonic device that helps you remember how to multiply two binomials. So this is going to be something that we'll really work with a whole lot next year. But basically, when I have two binomials being multiplied together, I can use this called FOIL. And a mnemonic is where I take the first, um, I take a letter from something and I make a word out of it. Okay. And so what this means is the F stands for multiply the first term of each binomial. So a minute ago when I did that, when I said I'm multiplying the first term of my first binomial times the first term of my second binomial. So that is what we, that is our letter F. The letter O stands for multiplying the two outer terms. So when I talk about outer terms, I'm talking about the first term. So just like we just multiplied that X by the last term or the outside term of the second binomial. So I'm following the same process. I did the first term of the first binomial times the first term of the second times the second term of the second. Now the I stands for inner terms. <clears throat> Change my pen real quick so you can see the difference here. So that means here, I'm gonna multiply my second term by the first term. So now I have two times two X, that is gonna be my I for inner, and then two times three will be my last. So we said F-O-I-L, okay? First, outer, inner, last. So that's gonna be the process that we're looking at as we're practicing these. So it's very helpful if you go ahead and start by writing out the letters for FOIL. So go ahead and over on lesson 138 <clears throat> on the first one, underneath it, where we have X plus two times X plus two, write out the letters F-O-I-L. And I like to stack it because it, to me, it's easier to see. All right, so what did the F stand for? What letter did F or what did F, what was the word for F? First. So I'm going to multiply the first term of each binomial. So first times first. So what is X times X? X times X is going to be X squared. So by your F, go ahead and write X squared. Okay, remember O stands for outside. So I'm taking my two outside numbers. So again, it's this X here, but now I'm multiplying it by the outside two. So two times X is gonna be two X. <clears throat> so I'm multiplying X times two, and that gives me two X. So your O by O, you should have two X. Now I'm changing to my next term, which is a positive two. I do my inner two terms or my inside, which is two times X. Again, that is two X. And then my last terms will be two times two, which is a positive four. Now the main thing to pay attention to is if it's positive, I don't have to write a plus sign, but if it's negative, I do have to write my negative sign. Now, which of these terms are like terms? I have x squared, 2x, 2x, and 4. What are my like terms here? What did you notice in the previous section when we did problems? What were our two terms that usually were the ones that were combined? 
The two in the middle. The two in the middle, yeah. So my outer and inner terms. So usually those are gonna be the two that are gonna be like terms. So notice I've got two X and two X. When I combine like terms, this is the same as a positive two X plus two X. And two X plus two X is four X. So I'm able to simplify that. So now my answer is gonna be my first term, which is X squared. My next term is 4x, and since it's positive, I'm going to put plus 4x. Then I have a 4 at the end, and because it is positive, it will be plus 4. So there is my answer. So by writing out the letters F-O-I-L, I remember I have to multiply the two first terms. I have to multiply the outside terms. I have to multiply the inside terms, and then I multiply the last terms of each binomial. So that kind of is a pattern. It's a step-by-step -step on helping me to remember. So the first thing I do is FOIL. Then I combine like terms and write my answer. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Notice the first one was X plus two times X plus two. Now we have X minus one times X minus one. Let's go ahead and write F. O I L. Okay, so we've got it written out for the second one. So I'm going to multiply X times X because this, these are my first terms. And X times X is X squared. Multiplying X's, multiplying variables means I add the exponents. So X to the first times X to the first, I would add one plus one is two x times negative one. So negative one times x is going to be negative x. Remember we said paying attention to that negative in front is important. <clears throat> All right, so we've done first and outer. Inner, my inside one's negative one times x. Again, will be a negative x. And then negative one times negative one. Negative times a negative is a positive. Yeah, one. It'll be a positive one. Good. So I'll just write it as a one. <clears throat> Again, I look at my outer and inner terms. They are the same. So negative x minus x is the same as negative one x minus one x. And a negative one minus one is a negative two. And so since it's negative one x minus Wait, Isn't a negative minus it's a negative taking away. So it's the same as having negative one X plus a negative one X. Yeah. If we wanted to change it to adding the opposite to help us remember, then it would be negative one X plus a negative one X. So that would be negative two X. All right, so when I write my answer, X squared minus two X plus one. My signs in between each term is based on, is my number negative or is it positive? If it's a negative number, it'll be have a minus in front of it. If it's a positive number, it'll have a plus in front of it. All right, let's look at the next one. Go ahead and write out FOIL. And I've got two X times X. So two X times X is going to be two, x squared, 2x times a negative 2 is going to be negative 4x. <clears throat> so we've multiplied our first term of the first parentheses by each term of the second. Now I go to plus 1, and 1 times x is x, and 1 times a negative 2 will be negative 2. My two middle terms, I have negative 4x plus x. So negative 4x plus x is equal to negative 3x. So I can see that I've got 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. Any questions on that? First times first. 
outer times outer, inner times inner, last times last. When I multiply numbers with variables, um, I multiply the numbers first, then the variables. <clears throat> but if it's just a number times a variable. So now let's back up, back to page 301. So go back to page 301. And I figured it might be a little bit easier to go ahead and just FOIL page 301. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice this. Go ahead and write F-O-I-L. All right, so what am I gonna be multiplying for F? What will be my first thing to multiply? What times what? Where am I gonna start? I'm gonna start with my first X and what am I gonna multiply by? X times X, good. And X times X is X squared. X times X is X squared. Now, what am I gonna multiply by? X times two. What is X times two? X times two is what? Two X. So I've multiplied my first term by each term inside parentheses. Now I've got to go to my second term and I say three times X is going to be three X and then three times two is six. So now I have X squared, two X, three X and six. What are my two that can be combined? 2x and 3x are like terms. So I'm going to add those together. And what is 2x plus 3x? 5x. OK, so to write my answer, I have x squared plus 5x plus 6. Any questions on how we got any of that? <clears throat> okay, so notice everything in that was positive. So I didn't have any negative numbers. I didn't have any minus signs. Everything was positive. Now let's look at our next one. I have a positive and a negative here. So let's see how that changes things. Let's go ahead and write F O I L. Go ahead and write out FOIL. We're gonna start by first times first. So that's X times X. And what have we said that X times X is? X squared. So for F, write X squared. <clears throat> o is outside times outside. Now notice I have X times a negative three. So a positive times a negative is a positive times negative, opposite signs is gonna be a negative. When I multiply, will be negative and um, negative three times X will be negative three X. So after the O, I have negative three X. So after O, make sure you have negative three X. So now I multiplied my first time, term by each term in parentheses. Now I go second term. So four times X, they're both positive. So it will be positive four X. And then I have a positive four times a negative three. Positive times a negative is a negative and four times three is 12. Now this is where I have to be super careful because look at my two terms that I'm going to be combining here. I have negative 3x plus 4x. So this is negative 3x plus 4x. Remember when I'm adding, my x's are just going to stay the same. But now I've got negative 3 plus 4. When I add, I take the sign of the larger and find the difference. 
So that's just going to be one X. So I can just write that as X. <clears throat> so now that I've, com I've combined my like terms, I can write my answer. X squared plus X minus 12. Okay. So for that one, notice that now I have a plus and a minus in my answer. Okay, I have a plus and a minus in my answer because I had a plus and a minus in my two problems that were multiplied together. So notice we started with two binomials and what kind of answer do we have? What is our answer called when it has three terms? Anybody remember what a three term bin, uh, polynomial is called? What is my prefix for three? What did you ride when you were little that had three wheels? A tricycle, okay? So the prefix tri means three. So this is called a trinomial. A binomial is two terms and we just multiplied two binomials together. So a binomial times a binomial in this situation is a trinomial, okay? Let's go ahead and look at our next one underneath that. Go ahead and write F O. I L. What am I going to multiply when I multiply first times first? What am I multiplying? 2x times x. 2x times x will be 2x squared. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so 2x times 2 is 4x. Now I have a negative 1 times x. Negative 1 times x will be negative, and if you want to go ahead and write it as negative 1x, you can. And then a negative 1 times a positive 2. My signs are opposites, so I'll have a negative answer. And negative 1 times positive 2 will be negative 2. I'm going to combine my two middle terms by adding. So I have 4x plus a negative 1x. So what is 4 plus a negative 1? Or 4 minus 1? It's going to be 3x. So 4x plus negative 1x is 3x. So now I can see my answer is 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. The thing I used to struggle with when I was in school was not knowing how to decide what my, my signs were between my numbers. Because notice in each of these, I've got plus and plus. Then I have a plus and a minus. And here I have a plus and a minus two. And I was just always so confused on, well, how do you know if it's a plus and a plus or a minus and a minus or a plus and a minus or a minus and a plus. And it's based on if my number is positive, then it will be a plus in front of it. If my number is negative, there will be a minus in front of it. So addition is the same as having positive numbers. Subtraction is the same as negative, okay? Let's go ahead and look at this next row or next column. Notice now I have a negative and a negative. So start out with F O I L. We'll multiply X times X is X squared. X times negative two is negative two X. Negative one times x is negative one x, and negative one times negative two. A negative times a negative is a positive two. So these are my two terms that I'm going to add together. So I have negative two x plus a negative x. Negative two x plus a negative x will be a negative three x. So x squared minus three x plus two will be my answer. X squared minus three X plus two. <clears throat> Let's look at the next one. F 
O I L. X times X. You're going to get so tired of hearing this, but X times X is always X squared. X times negative two, negative two X. Two times X is a positive two X. And then two times negative two, positive times negative is a negative and two times two is four. Now look at what happens when I add together negative two X plus two X. What is negative two plus two? Nothing. Nothing is zero, right? And what is zero times X? Nothing. Zero. So in this problem, notice now I have X squared, zero and negative four. So I can write this as X squared plus zero, whoops, minus four, which simplifies to where I can just leave this out right here and have X squared minus four as my final answer. So if my middle two terms cancel because I have a positive and a negative of the same number and they go away, I just eliminate that middle term and I just write my first and my last, okay? Because my middle two terms cancel each other out because one's a positive and one's a negative. So then I just write my answer as, this is called a binomial, um, a perfect square binomial, but we'll talk about that more next year. We won't stress about that this year. And then the last one here, F, O, I, L. All right, first times first, two X times X, two X squared. Outer two X times negative one, positive times a negative is a negative, two times one is two. So two X times one is two X. So I have negative two X. Next term is three times X. Those are my inners. So three times X is three X. And then three times negative one, positive times negative is negative. Three times one is three. I'm gonna combine these middle terms and I have negative two X plus three X. So negative two plus three, is gonna give me a positive one X, which I just write as X. So I have two X squared plus X minus three. Two X squared plus X minus three. Wait, can't you simplify that? Make it three X squared? Okay, so why could I not make it three X squared? Oh, because squared and that term is yeah. what is what is my exponent here yeah that they're not the same no nope, that's an x squared and this is an x now the only time that i could put them together is if they were being multiplied but since i'm adding i can't combine them unless they're exactly the same okay that makes sense okay. all right so those are our examples on foil so for your homework you will practice page 303, you're going to write each of these out. Write FOIL, multiply, and solve. Okay, so homework, page 303. Today is 419. Activities 2. Any questions on that? All right, let's go ahead and do some review. Okay, because we've been going through some several different things here. We've talked about adding, we've talked about subtracting, we've talked about multiplying, we've talked about dividing. So it's important that as we go through this, we remember the previous skills that we've learned because these are going to carry through all through math, um, especially for right now. All right, so what we'll do. We'll look and see how much we get done because let's see what time's the break. Break's in about five minutes. All right, so what we'll do is we'll start 
We'll probably do the first two in each row, the first in each row. <clears throat> All right, so let's think through. Notice I've got a positive 4x squared plus positive 7x squared. So what is 4x squared plus 7x squared? What is 4 plus 7? Four plus seven is what? 11. So four X squared plus seven X squared is 11 X squared. Positive three X plus positive X. Remember, I understand that to be a one in front of my X there. So that means I have three X plus one X. Three plus one is four and it's positive. So I'm gonna have plus four X. <clears throat> now this is where I have to be careful because I've got a negative sign. Negative five plus positive three. Negative five plus a positive three. Take the sign of the larger, which is negative. Find the difference, which is two. So the first one should be 11x squared plus four X minus two. Any questions on that one? All right, look underneath it. 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 4x squared plus 7x minus 4. <clears throat> First, I'm going to start with 3x squared plus 4x squared. What is 3 plus 4? 7. So 3x squared plus 4x squared is 7x squared. <clears throat> My next one, positive 2x plus positive 7x. 2 plus 7 is 9, so I'll have a positive 9x. <clears throat> positive 1 plus negative 4. Positive 1 plus negative 4 means I'm gonna to have to take the sign of the larger. My larger value is the negative. Now I find the difference of four and three. Four, I'm sorry, of four and one. Four minus one is three. So my answer is seven X squared plus nine X minus three. Any questions on addition? Okay, in just a little bit, we'll be working on this um, part of your classwork. And so your assignment will be to finish the addition. We did two as a sample. You'll need to finish the other four. <clears throat> Let's look at subtraction. Remember, this is where we talked about where we want to change from subtraction to addition. And we need to change the signs of each number that follows the subtraction changing to addition. So in this problem, I'm going to change my minus to a plus here. 4x becomes negative. 4x squared, positive 3x becomes negative 3x, and negative 3 becomes positive 3. So that way I can just mark all that out and I've got a new problem. <clears throat> so now I have 7x squared plus negative x squared, I mean 4x squared. So 7 minus 4. 7 minus 4 is 3, so 7x squared plus a negative 4x squared is going to be 3x squared. Positive 4x plus negative 3x. Positive 4x plus a negative 3x, take the sign of the larger, and 4 minus 3 is 1, so I'm going to have 1x, which I can just write as x. And then lastly, positive, positive 5 plus positive three is going to be positive eight. There's my answer. Go ahead and take a break and we'll come back.
Isabel's class just now? Did she leave? Was there anybody in there? I think, actually, I think it's Donna. Donna's class. Okay. I think is usually in there. She must be mourning. I bet she's mourning. That's fine. I have a check on her. Yeah. I have a few people who have sent deposits here. Mm. I wish they had not said by Wednesday. Yeah, because people are such a weird day. day. I don't know who made that. Why, Thursday? Thursday? why not Thursday? I'm going to ask that dude in there, and I just yeah. Why not? Why not just Thursday? That, that was made before, like nobody told me. I thought it was, it was a weird just, day. It yeah, is. Like, it's like first. Why it should, Well, it should be Thursday yeah. to let people bring it right. Thursday. Because I guarantee you, there's going to be a lot that aren't here, and then they're going to start dropping. And teachers aren't going to want that either. No. No. Surely. I know. I've got to sit down and check through. How did Lana do? Well, so I don't know if you knew this or not. She rolled her ankle. and I mean, she had a good high ankle sprain a week before. Oh, so no. It's been 10 days. Mm -hmm. But it, it was the Thursday night before she competed the next Friday. Oh, my like, goodness. So she a had week. A, a week. Yes. Wow. So she rested. They let her rest. She still had to do um, run throughs and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, um, I mean, she ended up, we didn't even think she was going to compete all four events. Right. She did everything. Oh, good. So that was a positive. Yeah. Her, her uh, will to push through. Yeah. I was going to say that's because great. You, you could tell she wasn't on her. Because you definitely, you know, it's kind of that fine line. You don't want them to hurt themselves. But you also want them to see that, hey, I might can do a little more than I think I can do. You don't yeah. want to be like that. So she did it off for a minute. Good for her. Oh, man, that was a call. Because where's all the code? It was still open. Okay, you found the code there. 
So we have just done a couple of adding. We did a subtraction and remember we changed to from subtraction to addition. But then that means I have to take the opposite sign for everything after. So now I have negative 4x squared minus 7x becomes plus 7x and plus 4 becomes minus 4. So I can go ahead and mark those out so I'm not confused. So now I have 3x squared plus negative 4x squared. So 3 plus a negative 4. My larger is negative and 3 minus 4 is negative 1. I do not have to write the 1. I just write it as negative x squared. My next will be positive 2x plus positive 7x. 2 plus 7 is 9 and it's positive so I'm going to have plus 9x. Then I have positive 1 plus negative 4. Take the sign of the larger which is negative, find the difference which is 3. So x squared plus 9x minus 3 is your answer on that one. So in a little bit when we have work time, or whatever you don't finish in class becomes homework. So we'll have four that you'll work where you have to change from subtraction to addition and add the opposites. All righty. Now multiplying monomials times trinomials. Okay, so the first one I'm multiplying 4x times 3x squared. I'm going to multiply 4x times positive 2x and 4x times negative 5. Remember, if I only have one term outside parentheses, I just multiply it by each term inside parentheses. 4x times 3x squared. 4 times 3 is 12. And x times x squared is going to be x cubed. So 4x squared times, I'm sorry, 4x times 3x squared becomes 12x cubed. 4x times 2x, 4 times 2 is 8, it is positive, so I'm going to have 8, and x times x is x squared. So 4x times 2x is 8x squared. Now I have 4x times negative 5, positive 4x times negative 5 will be negative 20x. So your final answer is 12x cubed plus 8x squared minus 20x. 
underneath that one, I'm gonna distribute 2x squared. 2x squared times 3x squared. Two times three is six. X squared times X squared is X to the fourth. Remember when I multiply variables with exponents, I add the exponents. So two plus two is four. Two X squared times negative two X. Positive two times negative two is negative four. And X squared times X is X cubed. Two X squared times five. Positive two times positive five is a positive 10. And I don't have anything else to multiply that x squared by, so it just stays on the end. So six x to the fourth minus four x cubed plus 10 x squared is your solution. You will need to finish the other two. Dividing. Remember, we said that when I divide, I have to divide the terms inside parentheses by whatever is outside. So in this situation, I'm dividing both of them by three. So I'm gonna put that over three, that over three. So remember, now I've got nine X divided by three. This is where I'm gonna look at nine and three. They're both divisible by three. So three divided by three is one. Nine divided by three is three. So now 9x over 3 has become 3x. 6 divided by 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So I have 3x plus 2 is my final answer. I write them over the denominators. I simplify. The next one, I have a trinomial. So that means I have to multiply and I have to divide each one by three, whoop, let me get my plug. All right. So now I'm dividing each term by three. Three divided by three is one, six divided by three is two. So now I have two X squared, negative six X divided by three, three divided by three is one, six divided by three is two. So I have minus two X, three divided by three is one, nine divided by three is three. So I have plus three, 2x squared minus 2x plus three. And you will finish the rest. Okay, so we've looked at, we've reviewed our adding, subtracting, multiplying by a monomial, dividing by a monomial, now, we are gonna look at what happens when I divide polynomials. This is something that we will go into much more in depth next year, but I just want you to see that there is a way that I can divide polynomials. And we can see here, it looks really funny, but it sets up like a long division problem, okay? So just like, think about when we have, say, um, seven into 217, okay? So think about how I take my number on the outside and I look to see what I can divide it into. So I say seven won't go into two. So, but seven will go into 21 three times. So I divide it first, then I multiply three times seven is 21. And then I subtract 21 minus 21 is zero. Then I bring down my seven and then I start all over. So I divide, I multiply, I subtract, compare, bring down DMSCB. It's very similar 
when I'm doing this with polynomials. The main thing that is different is that when I divide, I divide the first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. So really all I'm focusing on here is x into 2x squared, okay? So I focus on first term into first term. So think about this is the same as setting it up where I have 2x squared over x. So I think about when I cancel, okay? So think about when I was dividing. So I said this x would cancel and this would become x to the first. So this is actually 2x. So I said that 2x squared divided by x is going to give me, is gonna be 2x. But I write that over my second term. So I write 2x over my middle term. So I divided first into first. Now I multiply that and I'm gonna multiply 2x times x. 2x times x is 2x squared. And then I multiply 2x times a positive two. And that is gonna be plus 4x, okay? And so I'm gonna move it on down where we can see this. So kind of that's what they've done here is in the first step, they said first term into first term is 2x. Then they start to multiply and then that's where we got here. So 2x times x plus two is 2x squared plus 4x. Now at this point, this is where I'm subtracting. So just like divide, multiply, subtract, I do the same thing here. I divided first term into first term, then I multiplied, now I subtract. And 2x squared minus 2x squared is just zero. So I don't have to write that, I can if I want to. And then 7x minus 4x is a positive 3x. But now my next step is to bring down plus six. Okay, so I have to bring down the sign and the number. So now we can see I have three X plus six. And now I start it all over again, where I say first term will go into the first term of this one. X will go into three X three times, so that will be a positive three. So that's what they've shown us here. Is that positive three, now I do three times X is three X and three times two is six, three X and six. Now, if I were to subtract that, that all equals zero. So my answer is two X plus six. We're not gonna focus a lot of this um, for this year. It's That's a more kind of confusing right now. I want you to make sure that you're good with adding, subtracting, multiplying a monomial times a polynomial, dividing a polynomial by a monomial, and then multiplying a binomial times a binomial using the FOIL method, okay? I just wanted you to see how this works. We'll pick up with it next year and we'll practice more with this next year, but I just wanted you to at least see it this year. All right, so what we're gonna do is that will be, so for the rest of class, we will work on activities two, page 303, so we have activities two, page 303. It says multiply using the FOIL method. So you're gonna set up F-O-I-L. First times first, outer times outer, inner times inner, last times last. Okay, so you're gonna be FOILing these. Then you're gonna finish up the review of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing monomials on page 304. So today is 419. So we are going to be working on pages 303 and 304 for the rest of class time. Once you're finished, you won't have any homework. Okay. So those of you online, if you're working and you have questions, be sure to let me know so I can help you. Y'all can go ahead and get to work on these. I'll go ahead and flip on the light in here so y'all can see the work.
Okay. So one thing is from set F O I L. Okay. So let's take a look. So L stands for first times first. So that means I'm going to multiply X times X. What is X times X? Good. Now outer means I take my two outsides. So I'm going to have X times four. Good. Now I'm going to move to my inside term and have one times X. And then last terms, one times four. Okay, so I have two, I mean, I have x squared, 4x, 1x, and 4. Which of these two have the same, are the same terms? What are ones are, this are similar? Okay, so 4x and 1x, okay, because they both have coefficients and variables, okay? This is just a number. This has an exponent of 2, so those are going to be different. So usually it's going to be my middle two, the O and I, are usually going to be the ones that combine. So I'm going to combine them since it's a positive 4 and a positive 1x. What is 4x plus 1x? Good. So go ahead and write 5x here. So my solution will be x squared plus 5x plus 4. So go ahead and write that x squared. No, so you're just starting to write something totally separate. x squared plus 5x plus 4. Okay, so I have three separate terms separated by plus signs. Okay, we multiply first times first, outside times outside, inside times inside, last times last. Combine these middle two terms to get that middle term right there. Everything was positive, so I have pluses to go in between. Okay, so that's what you're going to do for each of these. Go ahead and set up for you. What did you add there? Yes, mm -hmm. There's no variables with it. Good luck, there's your answer.
times x times x squared. And then what did you multiply? x times so much longer than the sign should have had. Okay. And then we did go times x is 3x. So 3 times negative 2 is going to be what? Negative 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now when we combine those middle terms, I've got negative 2x plus 3x. So what's a negative 2 plus 3? 1. 1. So that'll just be a positive 1x, which is positive x. And then what about that last term? What does it need to be? This one right here, what does that sign need to be? Good, because it's negative here, I'll have a minus 6. Okay, so it should be minus 6. Okay, so what you can do, sorry, instead of having plus and minus, you can just change it all to minus 6. So we said 2x squared plus negative 8x squared. 2 plus negative 8 is negative 6. And then we said x squared. Positive 4x plus positive 7x. 4 plus 7 is 11x. Now I've got a negative 2 plus a positive 6. What is that going to be? My sign is going to be positive, right? What's the difference of 6 and 2 now? What's 6 minus 2? Uh, 4. Mm -hmm. so that should be 4. So when I have, when I am adding opposites, I take the sign of the larger and find the difference. All right, so this became a negative. So 8x squared plus negative 5x squared. The sign of the larger is positive. Find the difference 4x squared. Good. Negative 7x plus positive 6x. What is negative 7 plus 6? I'm going to take the sign of the larger. So that's going to be my negative. But what's the difference in these numbers? What is 7 minus 6? 1. Just 1, yeah. So I'll do 1x. Same thing here. Negative 5 plus a positive 8. Sign of the larger is going to be positive, but what's the difference of 5 and 8? What's 8 minus 5? Good. Yeah, very good. I'm doing okay online. Any questions? No, ma'am, but I have to leave. Okay. Very good. Well, good luck with your game. And then um, just let me know if you need any help with doing this homework. And if not, I'll see you Thursday. Thank you. Thank you, hon. Bye. Bye-bye.
times you do two x times x is what? Two x. What happens when you multiply x times x? Good. So that's gonna be two x squared. Good. Now two x times negative two. So what's two times negative two? Or what's two times two? Positive. Okay, but what's two times negative two? Negative. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be negative four what? Just x. So I've got two x times negative two. So two x times negative two is negative four x. Now I have negative one times x will be what? If it's a negative times a positive, what should this be? Negative x, good. Now, negative 1 times a negative 2. Positive 3. Mm -hmm. What's 1 times 2? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're not adding on, you're multiplying. So negative times a negative is a positive, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now I'll put it all together. 2x squared. Okay, now we've got to look at these middle two terms. What's going to happen when I combine negative 4x and negative 1x? What are we going to have? Good. And what's your last term? 2. Mm -hmm. So it's be plus 2 since it's a positive 2. Good job. Good. So if I already owe mom $4 and I just borrowed three more, how much do I owe her now? Seven 
each bug side. Yeah, very good. Good job. Feel okay? Let me know if you need help. Remember that when you met these middle terms each time, these should have a variable with them. Okay, because you're multiplying this times the outside, so 3x here is going to cause this to have an x in my answer when I multiply it by the last term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 3x times negative 2, what's a positive times a negative? Which one? Mm -hmm. So if I have opposite signs, negative answer. Same signs, positive answer. So since I have opposite signs, a positive 3 times a negative 2 will be negative 6x. So put your negative in front of that. And then positive times positive is positive. Okay, so what's going to happen when I combine these two terms? It's negative 6x plus 2x. I'm adding, not multiplying. Oh, I'm multiplying. Down here, I'm adding. Uh huh. Uh, I need help with this. So. Okay, hang on just a second. Yeah. Now, what if this was 3x times x? What happens when I have x times x? Where's my exponent? Good. Okay, so it should be some good. Now what is negative 6x plus 2x? What's negative 6 plus 2? Negative 4x. So it would be 3x squared minus 4x. And then we said positive 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So minus 4. The most challenging thing about working with these is paying attention to those signs. That's the hardest thing to get used to. Good, keep going. Look at your other examples for, all right, which one is it? Number five, the multiplying on page 304. Page 304. Here in the middle. Mm -hmm. Top or bottom or both? Uh, both. Okay. What is the first thing I'm going to do? Multiply, like use the distributive property on all of them. So multiply. Okay. So what is 2x times 5x squared? What's 2 times 5? Uh, so that'd be 10x squared. 10, but now I've got x times x squared. Um, what do I Cubed. X cubed, good. So 10x cubed. Okay. 2x times negative 3x. Positive times the negative is a? Yeah, it's a negative. So negative 6x. Negative 6x what? If I've got x times x, it'll be 6x squared. Mm -hmm. And then that'd be just. 6x plus positive 6x. 6x. Good. Okay. What about the one below it? Uh, that'd be 21x to the fourth power. Good. Next terms? 12x cubed. Good. So plus 12x cubed. And then negative 18x cubed. Not cubed. Hmm. Why not cube? Because I've got 3x squared times just a 6. I don't have an x to multiply. Okay. It's going to yeah. be squared, 18x squared. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
Okay, could you help me with the dividing, like just the first one? Sure. So the 9x plus 6 divided by 3. Wait, no, no, that, sorry. That's okay. Got it wrong. Uh, the 10x plus 5. Okay, so remember we said everything inside parentheses has to be divided by the number outside parentheses. So <clears throat> basically we're saying 10x divided by five, five, five minus five. Divided by five. Five. five divided by five is easy. That's zero. Wait, That's going to cancel and make a one. Black. Like you're thinking the right thing, but then you say the wrong thing. Yeah. So if I've got 10x divided by five, what are okay. both of those divisible by? Two. Okay. Can yeah. I divide by two? No, but like they're both divisible by five. <laughs> so the end answer is Divide two. by five. Good. Now that's a two. Yeah, two X. Two X. Minus one. Yep. There you go. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm done. All righty, if you're all done, you can go ahead and log off and be done. And I will see you on Thursday. Awesome. All right, bye-bye.